Healthy Women. Welcome to my first guest of 2024. I'm very excited. And I know that you're going to finish this listening to this podcast, just feeling like oh, someone's giving you a permission slip to actually, you know, do something about the way that you're feeling with a helping hand. So I have Jen with me today, Jen Wilson, and she is a wellness coach and she helps women to overcome stress and exhaustion. And she's here today to share her story, her experience and yeah, just leading you out of that sort of mindset if you feel stuck there now. And I know a lot of you, especially in the new year, are probably feeling it. So welcome, Jen. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. And yeah, I'm really excited because I know that especially, you know, we have January and well, we're recording in January. So this will be going out in February. We have isn't the January blues the most miserable day of the year is coming up and after Christmas it's sort of a, a bit of a dip so I'm really excited for you to share your expertise today and we start with a little bit of background so who are you where are you from and how did you end up being a wellness coach yeah so, uh, so I'm Jen and I live in a place called Harrington which is on the west coast of Cumbria in the UK um, I live with my husband, my two dogs and my eight-year-old son and I became a wellness coach really because of my own personal story and journey of what I've been through. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, it's quite a long story and it spans well over a decade but I think that's like a really important point to make that I struggled for over a decade with chronic stress and the reason I'm doing what I do now is because I just want to help other women I don't want other women to suffer alone like I did um and I want women to be able to overcome it much quicker <laughs> than I did because over 10 years is a really long time for that to follow you around it is um, <clears throat> you, like say a decade is I don't know we kind of measure our lives by decades don't we so that's a huge chunk of your life so far that you have the memory of you know being overworked being burnt out how did you, how did you first, you know, how did it start? How, what's, what, what was happening to you? What symptoms were you getting? So for me, it started, um, it was work-related stress initially. And I was in my late twenties and pretty new to the workplace. So I, you know, you're all learning out, you don't really understand the pressures and the strains and everything. And I was in a job that, which I now know that I wasn't suited to, but, um, I was having all these symptoms I, you know, I was feeling really like emotional and tearful and like I wasn't coping and really, really unsettled. Um, and I thought, oh, I need to get a new job because this isn't for me. So I got a new job. Um, unfortunately for me, <laughs> I got an even more stressful job <laughs> and there was more pressure placed on me. So <clears throat> as time went on, um, like I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what was wrong. And I thought I had some kind of like really serious illness, but I didn't know what it was. And because I, I couldn't pinpoint a specific thing, I didn't feel like I could go to the doctor and say, hey, this is going on. And I read a magazine article one day and I, I vividly remember exactly where I stood in my old house. And it was this two page spread on stress and it had this tick box of symptoms and I had them all. So I was just like, oh, I'm just stressed, I'm just, <laughs> just stressed. So to me, the relief that I didn't have a serious illness, I just packed it all, I'm just stressed, life can carry on. And that's what I did, I kind of just carried on. Um, but all these little symptoms kept sort of building up and they kind of like creep in and you can put them down to something else. So yes, I felt, I felt like really tearful and emotional all the time. I had bodily aches and pains. I started getting digestive problems. I actually developed irritable bowel, which was brought on by stress. You know, it took a bit longer for that to come on fully, but it started with the little niggles of digestion. Um, I was utterly exhausted. I was struggling to get through the day. I was, I'd get home, lie down till it was time to go to work the next day. Um, 
I couldn't concentrate. And these, these were building, by the way. So it, it started off with minor things that like you could put an ache and pain down to, I don't know, a workout at the gym or a headache, just a headache. It'll go. Um, I had a headache every day for two years, which when I say that now, why did I not think there was something I needed to deal with? Um, and it's all these little things that come in that you, you dismiss as being something else. Oh, well, I'm irritable because oh, it's my hormones or I can't concentrate because I'm tired. Um, and you, you just dismiss them. But what happens is, and what I know now looking back, is they all build up and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it got to the point when I was in this new role that um, it was like shutting down because this is when I was about to be signed off work um, when I hit my first burnout. And it, it's kind of like people are talking to you and you can see the mouths move, but you couldn't tell anybody back what they just said to you. You're kind of just going through the motions. And the build up to that was that um, those headaches for two years, those not being able to concentrate, not being able to make decisions, not feeling like you're coping, not sleeping, being utterly exhausted, just this whole host of, of um, different symptoms to the point where what the doctor said to me, he said, you're just shutting down because you can't physically and mentally take anymore. There's just nothing left to give. And I, I that first burnout, when I was signed off work, um, I, th I remember my husband said, well, it wasn't my husband then, it was my boyfriend then, but he's my husband now, so he stuck around, thank goodness. <laughs> um, but he said to me, like, how, how would you feel if something happened to one of the dogs? And I didn't, I think he was like testing how, how bad a place I was because I genuinely didn't feel anything about anything or anyone. I was just utterly numb to life and that's burnout you've just got nothing left to give there's nothing mentally there's nothing physically there's nothing emotionally and the physical side from being an active person it would take me all day to get out of bed get dressed take the dogs for one walk that was all I could physically do so that's how bad it got even, <clears throat> even listening to all that it's like oh why it's it's hard and it's hard it's hard to hear and knowing that lots of other people are doing exactly the same as what you did and I wrote down here just stress and I underlined it because that's what people say oh I'm just a bit stressed or you know it's just that just shouldn't be yeah. there it's it so be. yeah we kind of like you know play it down but it, it can it's serious and it, the more you leave it the more serious obviously it becomes and in your case the fact that you know just being hardly able to get out of bed you know yeah. to do everyday things that should be enjoyable and it just saps the whole joy out of your life yeah you and just you like you, you like robotic you just like going through the motions you're kind of existing but you're not existing at the same time if that makes sense you're there existing but there's nothing there's nothing happening and that yeah. that just stress I, I can honestly say now that if I had fully understood the implications on me physically, mentally, and emotionally with stress, I certainly would not have celebrated just being stressed. <laughs> you know, and pe people do say, and, and a, a small amount of stress, we all know we need it to get through challenging times and busy days, but it's when that builds up and it becomes chronic and it's there all the time that it becomes yeah. like a really big it's problem. A, it's a debilitating stress. Like, like you say, we all have... You know, when I talk about anxiety as well, like there's a certain element that that is normal. You know, you worry about things, it's normal. It, you know, a little bit of stress, normal. It's the way that, you know, can you deal with that? And then it goes, and then that's it. You carry on with your life. That's when it's it's okay because it's it's life. But when it is taking over and your life is becoming the stress, um, how long did you say your son was? So was this all happening when? Oh, so this was this was before. So I was I was signed off from that job once, stupidly, and I'm sharing this because I know other people do this because my friend's doing a similar thing at the moment. Um, I went back after six weeks because I thought, well, it's the job, and if I don't go and face it, it's never going to change. So I went back after six weeks, and all I'm saying is I wasn't there for many more weeks before I was signed off really long term, <laughs> yeah. um, and I was off 
for a really long time and I went through the whole process of you know all the different um therapies and counseling and CBT and all that stuff that they send you for but nothing like really worked um and then one day I just something just clicked and I thought there's only me there's only me that can make this better and when that clicked I still had absolutely no clue how to do that by the way I was absolutely clueless but there was something inside was telling me I'm because what I used to say to people, I just wish somebody would flick a magic switch and make it all go away. So you're clinging on to all these different therapies and counseling, thinking something amazing is going to happen. And I'm not saying, I'm not knocking those procedures, but something amazing doesn't necessarily happen. And it, it can take more than that. And I have known I know now that a big part of that is inside knowing that you have to be willing to do more and it's down to you. So um, I took a bit of a, plunge at that point and I thought right career change I need to get out of what I'm doing so I enrolled on a personal training diploma and I know that sounds really random going from like a corporate office job to that but I would just like to say that when I was in the height of building up to that stress I did go to this exercise class religiously twice a week and I swear that kept me going more because I used to come out feeling really relieved and good and relaxed and because of my irritable bowel I developed an interest in nutrition so I had this interesting exercise and how it helped me with my symptoms and I had an interest in nutrition so personal di- di- training diploma it was and then I, I had a complete career change I went to work in a health and rehabilitation gym with people with lots of chronic illnesses like heart disease lung disease cancer strokes and it, it was an amazing job and I'm, I'm sharing this because it was a really not a stressful job at all at all but all I would say is that and I'm, I'm doing the hindsight thing again now, I hadn't dealt with the stress. Yes, I'd been signed off. Yes, I retrained. Yes, I got a new job. But I didn't deal with the stress. And I just feel like it followed me around for a really, really long time. So although I didn't have a stressful job, I describe it as being like at the surface, just, just at the top. And the very slightest thing would just tip me again you know, and I'd be emotional and I'd be a bit of a wreck. And I kind of went on like that for years um, because I didn't know any different. And nobody like said, hey, Jen, that's not normal. Or maybe me be me, I put a front on and didn't let everybody yeah. know. And don't get me wrong, they weren't really awful years of my life. I still had good times. It wasn't like that whole decade time was dreadful. It really wasn't. I had a really good job that I enjoyed. We were, you know, we, we bought our house, we were renovating. But I'm just sharing it because I never dealt with it. It was always there. But then as life goes on, you have more challenges thrown at you, don't you? And then because you haven't dealt with that, that challenge then is a bigger problem and you don't deal with that well. And then it, it builds up and builds up. Yeah. And that leads to when my son was like sort of in the picture, when my second burnout came. <laughs> because I hadn't really learned from the first one. Yeah, I like to use the analogy. I'm just looking at my plant actually in the kitchen because that's the plant that I always picture. But with anything like this, I think what we do and like what you said is we kind of, so taking time off work and, you know, doing the, doing all the things that they they sent you to do, the CPT, CBT, like they, they are amazing. But it's, I see that as kind of like, you know, if you've got a plant and it's dying, that's spraying the leaves. But what we want to do is we want to treat the root. That's that's where, you know, the, the main part of the plant is. And we, you know, we look after plants. You know, when I see, you know, I'll spray it and I'll water it. I'm looking after the roots and we're looking after the leaves. But with ourselves, we tend to just look after the leaves. So, you know, what, what can people see on the outside? What can I do that's, you know, being passed to me instead of getting to that, that root cause? Yeah, I love that analogy. It's perfect yeah. way of describing yeah. it. And it just, you know, and we are nature and we have to look at, look after ourselves the same way. And that's why I always remind people, you know, and I'll ask them, like, what do you do if your plants die? <laughs> like, uh, and then, you know, piece it together. And I feel like, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly what you've just explained. You spent a good time and a good effort treating your leaves until you, you know, got to the root when you're, you went through your second burnout um and with your son so your son was young on your second burnout he was so the kind of um excuse me sorry the lead up to the 
second burnout <laughs> it's funny when you look back isn't it at the things you've done and you think what, yeah. what why was I doing all that like is it any wonder so um we um obviously I was in that job and it was really good and then we started trying for a family um I had to go we had to go through IVF we were renovating a house we spent a bit of time work, living with our in-laws whilst going through that because our house was uninhabitable and then we had our baby it was a really stressful pregnancy a stressful birth so there's all this other stuff you can see how this is starting to pile on to what I hadn't yeah. already done. Yeah. And then no one came along and our, my maternity leave was amazing. I loved it. You're just in this bubble, you switch off. There's nothing else that matters. And it, it was truly amazing. Then you've got to go back to work, haven't you? <laughs> so the, the stresses of life kind of like creep back in. But I didn't just go back to work. I just decided I'd start a business because, you know, that's a really good idea when you've got like a small baby, isn't it? Start a business. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I started a business and that came about because... I was having dogs, you've got to be out, whatever the weather, however tired you are, when you've been up with your baby all night, you've still got to take your dogs for a walk. And I just benefited so much. And I thought, where's all these other mums and babies that could be out feeling amazing by being in the fresh air? So that was my drive to start my postnatal, well, my fitness business, with predominantly doing outdoor exercise classes with mums and babies. And it kind of grew from there, I was running my business, and then the more I worked with these mums, the more I realised they needed more specialist help with the pelvic health and things. So I did even more training. I started writing new programmes. Can you see where this is going? We were renovating a house. I had a small baby. Yeah, so we kind of got to the November before COVID. And I just thought, if I was working for somebody else, I'd be going to the doctors now to be asked to be signed off with stress because... It wasn't as bad, but because I'd been through it once, I recognised the symptoms, so I knew what was coming. Um, but being self-employed, it's not really that straightforward. So I thought, I'd be all right, Jen, just you crack on, you know, you'll be fine. Um, and it got to the March, April, when the lockdown happened, and I had to stop because I couldn't run my classes. And I just looked at my husband and I just said, thank goodness somebody has given me permission to stop. And just with that permission to stop, because I had no choice, that was when it hit again. And I just described it as like, I just hit the wall, really. I just, because I've been trying to mask it and then you admit it. It's like when you ask for help, isn't it? The, the tears yeah. come as soon as you ask someone, I was like, oh. So it was, I'd admitted I needed to stop. I just hit the wall. And I think it took me till about September, from April to September to come to. And what I mean is I wasn't not, present with my son we loved lockdown and I'm sorry really sorry for people that had a really challenging time but we were just in this bubble but I was it gave me that time that I needed so yeah. it, when I kind of came to in September and what I mean by coming to is that ability to see slightly clearer and think a bit straight I just said to myself what am I doing like what what it was literally what am I doing like I've got a four-year-old son and I started to sort of think back how irritable I'd get with him, how distracted I was. You know, when you start admitting to yourself, because you bury it, don't you? Yeah. And I just thought, what am I doing? Like, I didn't go through all that to bring him into this world to be stressed and distracted and irritable and like not present, like yeah. and not enjoy him. So that was my real turning point. I just thought I've got this has got to change. So I started making changes from that point onward and that was sort of 2020. Wow so what were the first so someone's listening to this now and they're like oh my god that is me and they're sort of just they're listening and it might be the first time that they're admitting to themselves that they're stressed they need to make changes what would you say I'm guessing that would be step one just admitting it what would step two be? Where would you get, what What would you advise them to do next? Yeah, so step one definitely is admitting it. Like, you know, stop burying your head in the sand and thinking it's not happening. And it's just the way life is, because it, it really isn't. Like, it's, it's not supposed to be like that. We just get, you can get so dragged into stuff and you, you're in so deep before you know it, you can't see another way. Um, the, the key thing I would say is like acknowledging, and you could say that's similar to, admitting it but like acknowledging is just like acknowledging that you're stressed and being aware of what's making you stressed so 
you know, like, whether you keep a notebook or a journal or just through the day think because you know how you feel through the day you know when you react to things don't you and you flare up or you feel a certain way whether you feel angry or irritable or just that stress feeling or you're emotional or you sad whatever it is you're feeling acknowledge it and maybe jot it down and where were you what were you doing what had you just done who were you with you know and do that over a period of time and you will start to see a little bit of a maybe not a pattern but you'd be able to acknowledge what's causing your stress yeah like it could just be like life is stressful but we can often pinpoint like yeah yeah and there's certain things that we could maybe then have a look at taking out and i don't know that a lot of people when you do talk to them <laughs> about stress because they i don't know if you find the same uh, they get kind of a block as well and it's you know, they know all of these things need to change, but because it's sort of their day to day, it's like, I, no, I can't, you know, I can't ask for help. You know, if you make suggestions like, oh, why don't you try this? Like, no, no, I can't. I don't have time. And, you know, would you say that's another part of sort of not acknowledge, acknowledging what is going on? Because it's or what do you do you face that where people um, are just, no, no, I can't. I, I can't think like, I can take myself back to when. I was advised to do all these things to help my stress. <laughs> when you're so stressed and you're in that constant state of fight or flight, it's not a case of like, how do you explain it? So I went to a yoga class because I was advised, you know, try yoga, help you relax. And I was talking to somebody the other week and she said, she made me think of it a different way. She said, well, actually, when you're saying that now, that, that was the perfect alarm bell ringing of how stressed you were and how much you actually really needed to do that class because I was there and I was just like how long have we got I was just clock watching because you're so <laughs> you're so like fight off like you're so I call it wired you're so wired you can't relax you can't think straight you can't concentrate and people are telling you to do these things but it's another stress. <laughs> it is. It's really hard to put into words how how it makes you feel. But I think yoga probably, you know, when you're in that mindset, that yoga is what an hour, two hours. You've got to get there. You might have had to sit in traffic. Mm -hmm. You've got to do the yoga. You can't do it. It's hard. Like <clears throat> so you've then putting on the yoga clothes, and I can see where if you are stressed, all of that is just extra stress when all you want to be is at home being stressed in the comfort of your own home. yeah in the privacy so you don't have to explain yeah. yourself to anybody yeah. but um I, I mean I fought against a lot of things for a lot of years things I was advised to do that I just didn't and then when I when I knew I had to make a change I started trying all these things and this is like another piece of advice I'd like to offer people is it's about taking really small steps. So we think we've got to do this really grand thing to make this like really big difference. And it it really isn't like that. Like the women I work with, and it still blows my mind, I see the most amazing transformations by people taking the smallest steps. And you, you try something and it, it's not just about taking steps, it's about being open and the trial and error because what suits one person I would never sit here and say well you must do this and you must do that because what what suits one person doesn't suit another and it's very much a personal it's a personal thing yeah. so I say be open to trying things you've got to give it a little bit of time don't just do it once and think well that didn't work that was a waste of time nothing's going to work once but you know <laughs> introduce something try it for a few weeks is it having any impact if, or if it's really not working, right? Well, don't just think, well, there's no point. Just let it go. Try something yeah. else and just be open to that process of trying different things and knowing that just if that doesn't work doesn't mean there's no hope for you. It just means that you've got to try the next thing. And if you take a really small step, so if I give you an example, um, and this is only what I do, I'm not saying people have to do this, but I started... Um, well, my, my non-negotiables in the morning, one's journaling and you just choose a time and you, you just sit and do a little bit and then you do it again and then you do it again. And now it's habit for me. I don't even think about it. <laughs> it's habit. And I actually miss it now and I don't do it. 
So you, you keep doing that small thing till it becomes habit and you don't notice you're doing it. And then you think, oh, right, well, I could add something else now. Yeah. And then you add something else, you know, rather than doing these 10 things at once that you know is not going to happen because it's not going to happen, is it, when you're already stressed? No. no, I love that. And I I can't remember, <clears throat> I spoke about it in another podcast. I can't remember what I read or it was a po- another podcast I'd listened to. Or it was a study. Anyway. Oh, that was it. It was a lady who was told that she, it was slightly different, but it's just the one step at a time. She was told she had MS and wasn't ever given any options of how to help, you know, live with MS. So she took it, took it up upon herself and she went, she was like just one day at a time. And she started with something as simple as an, one glass of water in the morning as soon as she woke up before she did anything else. Anyway, fast forward the story. She, you know, lives with MS. She's happy. She's not as debilitated as what they predicted. And then as you were talking then that I was just, you know, thinking of that story. And, you know, one step could be that, yeah, you start with a glass of water in the morning. You take five minutes before you talk to anybody else. That could be one step, you know, before doing anything else, that little bit of headspace. And I'm, I'm sure that's, some, you know, just little that, you know, and that you could do that for a month and then you might be ready to go to yoga or, you know, do whatever. But it's all, like you said, personal. But making it, you need to make it easy for yourself, don't you, as well? Because, you know, in your case, you had 10 years of those anxious, stressed feelings to unravel. Like, it's not going to happen overnight. It's 10 years, you know, on how long you've had these feelings it's not going to happen very quickly because you know you've got all of that to unpack and all of that to get through i think that's a really key message as well that it doesn't just happen it definitely doesn't you know if you hit burnout it can take up to 12 months if not longer to fully fully recover and get back and i think women need to know that because you would give up too soon otherwise and think there was no way out but you can't expect to have being, and I, how many women out there it's not just me I know mine's really long but there's women for years you can't be in that state for years and then in, expect to be fixed in like <laughs> six yeah. weeks or something yeah. do you know what I mean it doesn't yeah. it doesn't happen yeah. and I'm just being realistic and open about that because I would never mislead anybody but what I would say is that and I'm, and I'm speaking from experience you know how, you know like it's worth the effort if I compare how I feel now to how I felt. There's no questioning that it wasn't worth doing what I've done. And I don't deny it's been challenging. I don't deny I've sat with some uncomfortable things. I don't deny that it's been hard work, but it's worth it. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. And you're on the other side. And I always try to, when I talk to people as well, just visualize yourself being on the other side and how does it feel? Because you will get there. So yeah. allowing yourself to sort of imagine your future self 12 months time, where do you want to be? You know, you want to be on a podcast sharing your story with other women to help them out. Amazing. You know, mm-hmm. it's having that and it's listening to people like you as well, seeing that there is an end to that chapter of your life. Um, mm-hmm. Because you do get stuck in it. And I know people will be listening, women will be listening to this and, you know, they might be the same as you, 10 years. And I, I I always think, I think of friends and I think, gosh, they, you know, you have your certain friends that are the stress friends, but now we've been friends for like 10 years, 12 years, and they're still the, the stressed friend, you know? So if you're listening to this and it's not you, reach out to your friend who is your stressed friend. Because if they've been your friend for a long time and they've been your stressed friend for a long time, then they're probably, you know, they've, probably need your help or they probably want some support or even just ask them like are you okay but really sincerely because we all have those people and the longer we see it you know it comes natural to us as well do you know what I mean yeah and I think also as as women that you know that reaching out and asking we're really good at putting on a front so when I got signed off from work long term everybody at work was like what because yeah. I just had this amazing ability to just everything's fine inside I was absolutely broken yeah. um and we can do that with you know your family generally pick up don't they they know but like you, you can still do that to an element with friends you can still yeah. pretend everything's hunky-dory and nothing's wrong 
Um, and yeah. we're really good at that. And I know women don't like to ask for help because we feel like we should be coping and we should be able to get on. And it's a, a, the feeling of failure, but it, it, it's not, nobody, nobody prepares you for life today. And no. it's, if you've never really been taught, I come back to that understanding what stress is and it, it's coping mechan- mechanisms, isn't it? And because life is always going to be stressful. It's never not going to be stressful, but it's how you react to it. Yeah. And if you're already stressed, you react to it bad. And then that adds another layer of stress and it just gets worse. Whereas, and me now, so a client says to me the week, do you, do you still do all these things then? And I'm like, yeah, I have daily kind of, I don't want to call them rituals. That sounds a bit heavy, but you know what I mean? I have daily things I, I call do. Them it's fine. I call them rituals. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's okay. But I, I, I have daily things that I do because I have to, and I know when I've not done them, I yeah. still get inside my own head and... I can go never back where I was but by doing those things daily and taking better care of myself it means that when that stressful thing next stressful thing does come it's not not going to be stressful because that's impossible but it's not going to tip me over the edge you know yeah. like it was done in the past I have um, I always say that I have my toolbox now but e- even last week it was last Monday I just had I just felt off but me four years ago would have embraced that off. I would have probably cried, sat on the sofa, cried, and just well, wallowed in the feeling of, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm anxious. I just feel, you know, I just had that feeling of like impending doom. Now I know what I need to do. I have this toolbox. So my toolbox was sit in the garden. Um, I worked in the garden, I sat on the grass, I lay on the grass for a little bit, had a cuddle with the dogs, I put some meditation music on, and I did a little gratitude practice in the garden, five things I'm grateful for right now, the plants, the trees, the birds, the sunshine, I know not everyone has that right now, but that, you know, I didn't used to have those tools, and it sounds so simple, you know, go and sit outside and look at what you're grateful for, but it worked, and the feeling shifted and I you know I wasn't anxious anymore so for me it was more anxiety than stress but obviously stress can bring on but I had no reason but it was just that toolbox of like right this is what I'm going to do I'm going to take and my essential oils take them outside sit on the grass do these things because I know it makes me feel good and the same as you I journal every morning I sit quietly for about 10 minutes before I journal so I meditate or I'll just lie on the bed with my eyes closed just you know just for that time to have for myself in the morning before I start the day and then I'll you know do a bit of journaling and it's having these tools that you know other people might hate that I know people that I've you know I I meditate but I know some people are absolutely not makes me feel worse I just get into my head I will try go for a walk then you know it's still getting into that space in your mind And it's finding, you know, some people prefer to go and work out and go to the gym and lift heavy weights or go for a run. We all have our own toolbox and it's about building that toolbox up, isn't it? That's what I was saying before. It's finding those things that that work for you. And it can be frustrating because, again, you just want this magic thing to happen, but you've just got to be patient. The key thing is if you do those small steps and they become part of your habit, they're not just a quick fix. They become ingrained into your day-to-day life. So then that means you're always doing them. It's not necessarily, and I still let you have extra tools I might go and get if I'm feeling a particular way, but I, st- I do those day-to-day things that keep me on an even keel that I don't even think think twice about now. Um, so yeah, and I think like another important message for women is don't be afraid to like ask for help and support. There's nothing wrong with reaching out. I had to because... I tried, I implemented all these different things, you know, looking after myself better and lots of boundaries in place and saying no and a better boundary with my business. But I still, there was still something, I find it really hard to put into words, there was still something not right and I was still very unsettled and unsure of what to do. I knew I still wasn't quite there. (laughs) Um, That's the beauty of now what you do as a coach and you know, because some people might think, oh, I've got no one to talk to, or they don't want to ask for help in the immediate family for whatever reason, or, you know, friends, or they don't want to try therapy, all of those things. And that's the beauty of 
go into a coach. It's a neutral person that's not going to judge you. They're not going to compare and they can help to guide you until you are ready to ask for help. Friends, family, family, friends, you probably go first. Um, but there are people, you know, and I know people are scared of like therapy. So I think reaching out to a coach and I know you had a coach, didn't you, before? I did. <clears throat> I, I, I had a coach. Had a coach. Um, so I, I did like just about 12 months of implementing all that those things for myself. And then I started working with the coach after that because I just was really struggling still. Um, and honestly, she absolutely transformed my life. Just And, and the, the interesting thing was, so when I did my, um, well, it comes after that actually, when I was working with her, a lot of it was mindset, which was an area I hadn't addressed because I didn't know a massive amount about it. It was more the self-care and boundaries and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was a lot of it was mindset with her, which was huge to me. And I'd only been working with her for a few weeks. And prior to, to seeing her, I literally couldn't think straight. My head, and I know so many women are like this, everything just went round and round on a loop. I just was oh crazy. It's the only way to describe it. I just I just couldn't stop thinking. Everything was just going round my thoughts, and it's like the, all this negative self talk and not knowing what to do, and just do you just inside your head? And how many women are just inside the head? You know how I failed at this. I haven't done this. What should I do with that? It's just horrible feeling. I could go for a walk with my dogs. My mind was still constant, constant, constant. So to to have that cleared, which she helped me do, was probably one of the most amazing feelings I've ever had to be honest because when I started journaling with her I could feel like reams of A4 <laughs> it's like oh turn another page but then the more I did with her I, I remember I went to journal one day and I just had nothing to say I was like oh my god I've got nothing on my mind this is amazing um and by doing that <clears throat> it allowed me to think clearly and I was just sat at home one night with my dog on the sofa and it was literally like this light bulb went off and I just went oh, I know what I could do I could like maybe train to be a coach and I could help other women. And, and that was where it all started for me. Um, and I, I did, I just, I went for it. I wrapped my fitness business up. I committed to training full time. And then I did like my wellness certification. And the interesting thing was that all the things I learned in that about wellbeing, I had somehow in my own way muddled through them as I was trying to find my ways to overcome and manage stress. So it kind of all Yes, I had all that awful stuff, but for me, it magically just came together at the end that all that I'd been through and this certification came together to put me in this, what I class as a privileged position now where I can help and support other women. Because not only do I have the certification behind me and the coaching skills, I get it. I've lived it. I've breathed it. I know how it feels and I know what women are going through. So that yeah. can be one of the most important things, I think. And I, I feel like some of these things... Other people, so in your case, you, they have to live it to then share to others. And there's lots of examples, but in your case, you lived that to then step into your purpose of helping others. Um, yeah. you know, and that happens in lots of places. So it's unfortunate for the person who goes through it it's to begin with, but it's a positive and, again, and obviously a mindset thing, being able to find a positive from a negative as well as, is something that you can't do when you're stressed and then you know leading yourself up to that so if people women not people if women wanted to work with you have you got any are you open for one-to-ones right now or group program yeah, yeah i haven't got a group program at the moment it's something i'm working on so um one-to-ones i'm open for um you know i can offer a chat with people as well if they want to have a chat with me first to see if you know, you've got to yeah. make sure you're the right fit and I'm the right person for them. I want yeah. people to be, able to be with me. Um, it's going to work for them, but yeah. Amazing. And I will put all of Jen's detail. I'll put uh, Jen's Instagram and any other links that she's got in the show notes if you want to go check her out. And, you know, if you're in the UK and you want to drop her a message, well, mm -hmm. anywhere in the world, really, but um, you can, you know, drop her a message. One last thing that I'm going to... So my new... 2024 I'm going to ask all my guests so what is your vision for the women listening to the podcast so after they've listened to this podcast today what is your vision what would you like to 
what would be the last thing you'd like to share with them? So my vision for what I'd like them to be doing or yeah for the women listening so what's your, your hope your dream <clears throat> your the women listening. so my hope is that by listening to the story that I my story that I've shared today that that resonates with people that helps women think oh hang on I shouldn't be feeling like this this isn't normal and there is something that I can do there is hope because if Jen's done it I can <laughs> um yeah. And it's true because if I look back now, I just think, wow, what a transformation. And I'm not saying that to, you know, think, oh, look at me. I, I can't say look at me because I've been there, you know. So I would just love, I would just love this to resonate with somebody else, even if it's just one person that says, do you know what? I have had enough of feeling like this and I want to do something about it so that I can just be present, live my life, enjoy it, have fun again. Because you lose all those things when you when you're wrapped up in stress then. That would just be amazing. Oh, thank you. That was a beautiful vision. And thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And I'll be back next week. Thank you.